Hello everyone, welcome to our first episode of the Wednesday Wire, and we are here with our first build. Today we're going to be looking at an idea that was posted a couple years ago on the TMEC forums uh, by Brain Goo. Uh, basically what we're looking at is a two-way water lock system. So it works similar if you've ever seen like air locks for spaceships so that uh, they can pressurize and depressurize a chamber before they enter or exit. Uh, you know, like the spacecraft or underwater would be like a submarine or something like that. Uh, so we wanted to build that for our, uh, for like an underwater base or something like that. So Bringu's original post was done with the Hoyt system. Um, and Hoyts are super useful, uh, but I have trouble reading them sometimes when I see somebody's uh, design. It's often difficult to interpret. And so I wanted to build something that was a little bit more straightforward, easy to understand. Uh, using logic gates. So I'll give a quick demonstration of how the thing works. So the area that we're standing right now would be like inside of our base. Uh, and the side to the right over here opposite this wall is kind of simulating our lake or our ocean, uh, wherever, whatever body of water our base is built under. So the way that it works, I've got switches hooked up here. You could use pressure plates if you wanted to, but I use switches just for a little bit more control so you don't accidentally step on the pressure plate and activate the whole thing. So if I'm coming from inside the base uh, going out, you can see the chamber over here is already filled with water. So I'm going to flip this switch and it's going to dump that water down the bottom there and then let me into the door. It's going to fill it back up and then open the outside door. So now I'm able to exit the base into the body of water. Uh, now I can do this the same way. It's a little bit harder to see since it's under the water here, but there's another switch right here that I can flip that does basically the opposite thing. It opens it up, depressurizes it, closes it, and then opens the door to let me into the base. What's nice about this is it allows you to use this as kind of like a multiplayer base. Uh, so you can have one player go all the way out from, uh, from the inside of the base. And regardless of how the room is pressurized, whether it has water in it or not, uh, another player from inside the base could then activate it going the same way. Uh, in a one-way system, if you go out, the next action would have to be coming back in. You couldn't have somebody go out and then somebody else follow them out shortly after. But this system works both ways. I'm going to show that right now. So the room's actually empty this time. So the first time we did it, it was full. So this time I flipped the switch. It's gonna let me in before it pressurizes it. It's gonna fill it up with water, open that outside door. Uh, now, when we did this the first time coming outside in, the room is already pressurized. So what I'm gonna do, uh, just to show it here again. So this is inside to out with the room pressurized like we saw the first time. It dumps it, lets us into the room, closes it, fills it up, and lets us out of the room. Uh, so now we can do it again the other way, and this is what we saw originally as well. Since it's already filled with water, it's just going to open the door, drops the water out, and then lets us back into the base. Now with the chamber empty, uh, coming from the outside in, is kind of the last scenario that you could encounter. This would be like somebody just left the base, uh, or somebody just entered the base, and you're coming in behind them after you missed the, the first uh, exit. So we'll flip the switch. It's going to fill it first. It's going to open the door, dump it out close the platform, and then open the door inside the base. So this works in all four combinations, whether you're going in to out or out to in, and in either case, whether the tank is already pressurized or if it's empty. Uh, so let's check out the wiring real quick and see how this whole thing works. Of course, like all wiring, it looks a little bit complicated when you first look at it. Uh, so it's fairly well div uh, divided up here. So this row down here is for going uh, inside to out. And this row up here is going outside to in. So it starts when you flip the switch, it's gonna check these two, um, these are broken logic circuits. Basically you can see one is off and one is on, and these are wired to the water sensor. So let's take a look at that here. So you can see the blue wire comes across, there's a junction box here, so these two wires don't cross. So it comes all the way across here. Again, it crosses the junction box, comes up, and it triggers these two, uh, broken logic lamps which is going to fire a signal out from whichever one is lit at the time. So right now there's no water in the chamber so the right hand side is lit up. It's going to start here uh, on this circuit and you can see it's going to light up this lamp which is going to fire the, the AND gate here through this yellow wire and we're going to start right here. Um, if the tank was full, you can see it follows the same process. It would come out of this logic, uh, this logic gate, however. It would come up and around here and actually fire from this one instead of the yellow one firing here. So this, this little piece right here, whoops, <laughs> let's, not, uh, let's not break all our wiring here. Um, this little piece right here is 
the key difference. This is the step that is different if the chamber is full versus empty. And the same thing holds, up, holds true up here. You can see this red wire comes out and skips a step, whereas the green one will light this lamp up and, and do that first step. So taking a look at what those two steps do, because of course those are kind of the, the key piece here that's unique for, uh, for each step. Um, the bottom one here, you can see that first step hooks to this platform. So what that does is when you fire this, if the tank is filled with water, this lamp here is gonna be lit up and it's gonna fire a signal out of this blue wire. Come in here, trip this, and start the chain of events here. And all this little circuit does and you see it's repeated a lot here. I use the same sort of setup. All this circuit does, it fires into two places at once. So it fires down here to the bottom one, and that's gonna light up this AND gate. That's gonna fire down here and toggle the actuators on this block to empty the tank of water. The other side of it here, the green wire, will light up the AND gate, which fires a signal to a one second timer. That one second timer will turn itself on. It doesn't fire an impulse yet. It'll turn itself on first. It'll wait a second, and then it's gonna fire another signal. And that signal's gonna spread out between the green wires here and the blue one. The blue one's just gonna flip up here and act like a diode and basically turn itself off. Uh, that way it doesn't continually keep actuating this floor back and forth. Uh, so that blue wire is just to make sure it only fires one time. Now the green wires here, the one going down, will flip this circuit back on and that's what toggles the platform back to active. So the yellow one will fire, it'll toggle these to uncollidable, uh, it'll dump the water out, and then when the green one makes its way around from the timer, it'll toggle these back on and that one second delay from the timer is enough to, for the water to clear out. The other side of the green will fire into the next sequence. Now, uh, I'll say this isn't the cleanest setup for the wiring diagram. Uh, or the wiring setup here because I have a couple of delays in here. So any of these little squares that you see that don't have a bottom, all they are, are delays. Uh, I did that just so I wasn't constantly flooding the place. And you can see I flooded it a couple of times anyway. Um, but those are just kind of safety checks for myself to, to not have to continually pump water out of this thing. Uh, so those can be completely removed. You can basically forget they're there and just pretend this goes straight across. Up here at the top, the one particular piece that's unique it, on this first step here isn't wired to the platform below. It's actually wired to a uh, statue engine. And what this does, the statue engine, you can see these pressure plates are wired down to our pump system. Uh, and this, is, this engine here is basically what powers the filling of the room. So whenever the room fills with water, that's being powered by this engine over here. That's literally all it's used for. So the player's gonna come down here, flip the switch. That's gonna fire this first step, which will pump water in. It's then going to go through a delay. It's gonna come to this node, which is gonna open the door and allow the player inside of the water-filled cabin. The third step will then uh, open, the, open and close that bottom layer to empty the water down into the lower chamber. And then the, there's one more delay in here. Like I said, these are unnecessary. You can take these out. You just run, uh, you just run blue and red wire from the timer here over to this hook up here. Uh, so it goes through the delay and then this final step comes down here and opens and closes the inside door to allow the player inside the base. Um, it's very similar going out to in, uh, or sorry, in to out. Uh, so this flip, this switch gets flipped. The first node here will drop any water out of the platform because when you're going inside to out, you want dry to dry. Uh, so you, uh, it'll empty out any water. It goes through a delay, again, unnecessary. You don't actually need this. Uh, this step here will open the inside doors and allow you into the dry cabin. It's gonna toggle those closed again through the diode mechanism. It's gonna go through another delay, again, unnecessary. It will then fire the pumps on the uh, from the statue engine here. Uh, or the dummy statue, uh, dummy engine, rather. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what they're called. Uh, the This node will fire the dummy engine, uh, which will then fill the room with water now that the doors have been closed. Once the room is filled with water, it's going to reach the laps, last step here, uh, which will open the outside door. So I know that's a lot to take in here, uh, but if you get stuck, feel free to ask questions in the comments below. It's not anything too crazy. Uh, once you kind of see what these mechanisms here do. And so I wanted to take a second to kind of explain one in detail. So the mechanism that we're looking at here, let's use this one as an example. 
So this connection here with the green and yellow connection on the left side, you can think of this as going left to right on this bottom row and it goes right to left on the top. So on the bottom here, this yellow and green connection is what starts the mechanism. That's your, that's your switch, that's your whatever starts the process that this thing is ultimately going to run. The connection over here, the green one going out, is just the next link in the chain. It's just going to go to whatever your next action is. The yellow and green hookups down here at the bottom, I have them hooked to a single gate on an AND gate. And what that allows you to do, you can see I do it up here and I do it over here as well. Uh, where I just use a single uh, deactivated lamp on top of an AND gate. And what that's really good for is taking two uh, colored wires and switching them into a third. Uh, so you can see up here I do it where I use a green wire. Uh, I couldn't run a red or a blue wire all the way out here, uh, or I might not have been able to run a, a red or a blue wire all the way out here. And so you can use this to actually switch the colors. So this takes a green wire as an input and just spits it out through a red and a blue. Uh, and that's all these little ones hanging down below do. So when you see like this little cluster of, of three blocks, the lamp, the gate, and the timer, the two below it are also a part of that as well, this, this lamp and this gate. Uh, so again, the inputs are here on the left. This is where you actually fire your initial signal. This could be a switch that you want the player to flip or a pressure plate you want them to step on. Uh, this connection down here, whatever comes out of the blue wire or whatever your equivalent wire color is, uh, it's going to fire that, wait a second, and then fire it again. And then to link something else to it after the end of the chain, you just take this green wire and hook it up to whatever your next starting point is. Uh, if you wanted to hook two of these together, like you see over here, the process is exactly the same. The inputs are yellow and green. It comes down here and the output from this logic gate is blue. You hook that to whatever you want to toggle. And then for your outputs, instead of just running a single green wire like we did over here, you run a green and a yellow if you're hooking into another one of these little, I don't know what to call these necessarily. I'm imagining there's probably something similar in like, uh, like circuit engineering, like electrical engineering that this might be similar to. I know the, the timer turning itself off is, I believe, considered a diode, but whatever this little cluster is, whatever you want to call that, if you're linking these two together, just make sure on the output you link the green and the yellow, otherwise it's only going to fire one uh, and it won't actually toggle. So these things are pretty handy and they're fairly easy to set up. Um, like I said, like once you get the little pattern of wiring down, it's really easy to set these things up and it makes it really, really handy to do uh, like one second toggles. Uh, these can also be used to make a three second toggle if you want to open a door, wait three seconds and then close it. Uh, you can use these as well. You just change the one second timer out to a three second timer. And of course you could do the same thing with a five second as well. Um, and if you want something really specific or you want like a really long delay, something longer than five seconds, these little delays that I've left in here that I mentioned were kind of unnecessary for this setup that they're not really needed. Uh, you can just wire these together. Um, so you can just follow this same pattern and wire uh, a bunch of delays together. So if you wanted like a nine second delay, you could uh, make one of these with a five second timer, hook it into one with a three second timer and hook that into a one second timer. And then on that last one, connect it to whatever you want it to toggle. Uh, so that way you could open the door, wait nine seconds, uh, and then the door would close automatically. So you can create any combination that you want out of this. It's not necessarily the most elegant way to do it in like larger number cases or longer delays, but it's a, it's a fairly handy little thing, I think, and it, it's made wiring a lot easier for me. Uh, and I kind of struggled to pick this up a little bit and kind of figure out how all this stuff worked. Uh, so I think it's a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit easier to read once you see the pattern of the action comes in from the left and it fires the action out of the bottom and then continues the chain out the right. Um, this one up here does the same thing. It just goes in the opposite direction, just out of sake of wire cleanliness. I moved this one to, to go right to left. But once you get that pattern down, I feel like this is a lot easier to read because you can easily see the, the order of, of process here. You can say, okay, it goes this one and this one and this one all the way down the line. And if you want to see what it toggles, you just trace that blue line coming out of the bottom and gate and you can immediately see what it's doing. So I think it's a little bit more readable. Let me know if you disagree um, in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on this. I haven't seen this particular setup before. If it's been done already, let me know. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see if anybody's done it better, if there's a more elegant solution to it. Now, one thing I want to do for all of my uh, Wednesday Wire series is I wanted to actually put this into practice into a base. 
Um, so we're going to go ahead and switch over to an underwater base that I'm working on. Uh, it's not quite finished, but I wanted to give you guys a little preview of what it's looking like so far and what this can actually look like in, uh, in your actual Terraria base. All right, guys, we are here in the start of my underwater base, uh, my underwater ocean base, you can see. So I've got a little submarine here that we're standing in uh, with our spawn point down below, kind of a copper, rusty, old uh, underwater kind of feel, like the old diving helmets. Like even the diving helmet in Terraria is kind of a, a rusty, dirty color. Um, got a little, like, uh, little house base lab kind of thing set up here. Uh, again, built like kind of the old, like, underwater, like it's been rusted a little bit, kind of metal. Uh, we got a tower up here. Uh, I want to turn this into a 23 MPC house base. So we just kind of have this tower sticking up to the surface. And you can see there's a pump up there. And if you noticed in the demo world, I had one up on the top right as well. Uh, and I'm going to cover what that does here in just a minute. Uh, we're going to cruise down here and actually take a look at the, uh, the same water lock that we were looking at just a minute ago, but in this base. So you can see our chambers over here and our wiring's down below. This is wired exactly the same, so it has those unnecessary delays. I'm probably going to compact this up a little bit because uh, I want to do a little bit more like uh, base down here below. So I'm going to try to like squeeze this stuff over and get a little bit more room down here. Uh, so I'll clean that up here eventually and take those delays out. But this is wired exactly the same way that you saw the uh, the demo world. So it does the exact same thing, and I won't run through it again here just for sake of time. Uh, but I'll run out of it and run in it here in just a minute. But you can see it's the exact same wiring setup. Uh, that uses these little square wiring apparatus to, you, to basically fire the entire mechanism. So again, the top row here is going out to in, and the bottom row is going in to out. You can flip those, you can move them around to fit the shape of your base however you'd like. Um, as long as the wires don't cross and, and all hook up to the same places, it'll be good to go. So again, it, it works the exact same way. In this case, the green wires are on top, and you can see the first one will fire the pump to pump the water uh, into the room if it's empty. This one runs all the way up to the outside doors. This one runs to uh, the floor to actuate the floor and drop the water into the chamber below. And the final one opens the inside doors to the base. So it all works exactly the same way. Uh, same engine set up here, same wiring, same everything. Uh, but I wanted to take a minute to kind of talk about some of the issues that uh, you can run into with this. Uh, in particular, like water uh, or like liquid duplication becomes an issue. <laughs> so you can see I have this pump over here on the left side of the chamber on the right side of all the wiring. And what that does is it's wired uh, all the way up. You can see it's hooked to a yellow wire that goes up to the surface of the water. And that, as you probably guessed, uh, wires up to this pump. And you can see I had it over here because I was trying to pump some of the water back in. There's like two blocks on the left side that you can't see uh, that I flooded my base with earlier not realizing it, and so I was pumping that water back out. Um, but you can see here basically what this does is just whenever it overflows due to liquid duplication, uh, it's just going to pump it right back out into the ocean. Uh, now there's another thing, and this is directly from the original post that this whole idea was inspired from. The merchant's going to go drown himself. <laughs> uh, that Bringu had originally done, he didn't have it set up to pump the water out, but he did have a little overflow system where he filled uh, a single square uh, in a u-shape full of lava and because of the way that terraria splits like blocks of water over the top of something when you're pumping it out over such a long distance uh, it'll actually burn the water off like if you drop a very small amount of water into lava the water completely burns away and doesn't leave obsidian uh, and so setting it up at the exact right level when it pumps out and that small little wave comes in and splashes over it if you have a bucket of lava in here, it'll actually burn that water off and keep your uh, ocean from eventually overflowing. Um, so that's what that mechanism does. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into our base. Uh, I know I went out the top because it was just kind of a shortcut. I was already up there explaining that. Ooh, a shark. Uh, but we're actually gonna go in through it this time. So you can see the chamber's already filled with water. And if you watch, you can actually watch the timers light up in sequence. Um, so I'm gonna flip the switch. You can see it moving through there little by little as it moves through each of the steps. Um, when you're building this, if you run into issues, one of the things that actually helped me a lot when I first did this, uh, when I was first experimenting with this idea, was I was having a hard time following what step in the process it was in. And this is another problem that you get with Hoik-based mechanisms as well. I think Hoik-based systems are far more versatile. You can do a lot more with them. Um, 
but with logic gates, the nice thing is you can actually visually see when the timers are turned on, and that's how you know what step in the process it's in. So if you want to slow that down, just switch all your one timer, one second timers out for five second timers, and that gives you way more time than you need to actually be able to watch it step by step. And usually when you run into problems with this type of system, at least from what I've seen, you end up uh, with like a wire cross somewhere, you forgot to junction box something that needed, uh, where there's like a crossed wire. And what you'll see is one of the timers that you wouldn't expect to light up will either light up once, or it'll be like flashing on and off super fast because it's hooked to like the, uh, like the dummy engine or something like that. So debugging this kind of thing is way easier, I think, than the Hoik-based systems. I could be completely wrong and just not have a good grasp on how Hoiks actually work. Um, but I feel like this is a more visual system, makes it a lot more, uh, a lot easier just to see what's happening when, when you're building something complicated like this. Uh, so the one thing that I did forget to mention in all this, I think I mentioned it briefly, is the water sensor down here. This should always be one platform below your pumps because the pumps will only pump water as long as there's uh, air one like above, they can only be halfway submerged basically. Um, they won't pump above their, their top level is the way to say it, I guess. So these should be at the very, very top of your chamber so that you fill the thing completely and don't have water rushing in. Uh, so the way that you do that is you stack two platforms. And then because I use the water sensor on mine, uh, the Hoik system that Brain Goo made didn't have a water, uh, sensor. I'm not, I don't know how it detected it. It could do it. <laughs> like I saw a video of it working just fine. Uh, but I didn't understand really like i said I don't, I don't fully understand hoik systems all that well like i've used hoiks and basic stuff but never for something like this so i'm not sure how his system detected whether it was full or not but this way is pretty easy to see it's like okay the water sensor is lit up so uh it's it's filled with water and you can easily see which of the two switches you can't see them real well right now because it's dark uh but these uh blue two blue switches at the beginning of each of the chains uh, those ones will let you see which which path it's going to take. I think it's a little bit easier to see than uh, than Hoik systems. So that's it for today. Once this base is fully complete, I'm going to post on the Terraria forums on the TMEC uh, sub forum. So keep your eyes peeled for that. If you haven't joined the TMEC sub forum, it's really really cool. There's a lot of awesome ideas out there. Uh, if you guys have ideas for what you'd like to see for the next Wednesday Wire, please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me a lot, and I appreciate the the feedback that you guys are willing to give about this one to make stuff that you guys enjoy. So this is Jevin signing out. Thank you guys for watching. Good to have early. Oh, the ice. Oh, the dart traps. Oh no. <laughs> that legitimately scared me. I jumped when those things fired. Oh my gosh. Am I going to die from this? I hope not.